Salt. You have often heard me complain of the weak science that underlies the current recommendations for salt consumption. I do so because these recommendations are not only misleading, they can actually cause harm to many consumers. They are all part of the hundred-year-old salt hypertension myth that has never stood up to solid scientific scrutiny and only served as a red herring to divert our attention away from gaining a greater understanding of the full role of salt in human metabolism. Unfortunately, it is a sad fact that public health epidemiologists, those medical statisticians who follow the government's salt reduction agenda, get research dollars delivered to them by the trainload, while the hard scientists, the physiologists, the biophysicists, and biochemists who want to study the role of salt and its actual impact on our bodies have a great deal of difficulty finding any research dollars at all. Occasionally, however, scientists can scrape together enough resources to do the research necessary to further our understanding of the role of salt. And that just happened recently, when a group of scientists discovered a function of salt or sodium chloride that was hitherto unknown. What is critical here is that this was no waffly statistical analysis that could be debated by selecting or omitting variables. No. This was a clear-cut, hard scientific study that visually tracked the movement of salt in the body using new magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, techniques. And the results were astonishing. It started after a group of scientists, led by Professor Jens Tietze, a clinical pharmacologist at the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine in Nashville, discovered that the skin, the largest organ in our body, can store sodium when we consume salt. In the course of their research, Professor Tietze and his colleagues noticed an unusually high amount of sodium in the skin of mice that had been bitten by their cage mates and became infected. Fascinated by this observation, the researchers went on to examine the link between infection and salt accumulation in the skin of humans. They found that patients with bacterial skin infections also showed remarkably high salt accumulations in the vicinity of the infection. Further experiments in mice that were infected with parasites called leishmania showed that a high salt diet boosted the activity of their immune cells called macrophages, thereby promoting more rapid healing of the infection. As you can see in this published photograph of two leg bones from the same person, the sodium clearly migrates to the site of the bone with the infection. It is crystal clear. At lower salt consumption levels, and when the infection is cleared up, this type of concentration doesn't appear. The researchers' findings suggested that the body mobilizes a salt stored in the skin and moves it to the site of infection where the higher concentration of sodium fights off the infection. The same higher concentrations of sodium also increase the microbe killing ability of the macrophages, the immune cells. In fact, it appears that salt is about as effective as interferon in activating macrophages to produce and release their microbe killers. Their findings support the idea that salt metabolism is a basic component of the skin's immunological barrier to ward off infections. Salt mobilization may be a very ancient mechanism to aid immune-mediated pathogen removal. This natural antibiotic effect of salt is a product of natural evolution and may offer a vivid explanation why all animals have a strong salt appetite. This research is a clear-cut, hard scientific demonstration of one of the many roles of salt in our diet. There are more to be discovered. If this type of hard science will be more heavily supported instead of the flim-flam statistics promoted by the health fearmongers in our government, we will be much better off. Salt!